and the meeting of the Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee is being held on Monday, Jan January 4th, 2021 at 7 p.m. via teleconference. As chairman of the Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. We are utilizing Zoom and the meeting link can be found on the agenda as well as on the city's website. You can also join by telephone by dialing 1-929-205-6099. Meeting ID is 839-87-23. 5303 and passcode 880178. The public may also view this meeting on Comcast Channel 16. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through public postings. Instructions have also been provided on the City of Nashville's website at www.nashornh.gov and publicly noticed at City Hall and the Nashua Public Library. If anybody has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 16, please call 603-821-2049 and they will help you connect. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, Please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Alderwoman Kelly will call the roll. Thank you. Alderman, Alderwoman Kelly. Thank you. Alderman Clemens. Uh, I am here. Uh, there is no one in the room with me and I can hear everybody uh, in the meeting. Thank you. Alderman Lopez. Um, Alderman Kelly is here. I'm alone and I can hear everyone. And Alderman Cleaver. I'm here. My daughter is with me and I can hear every, everyone fine. We have four members in attendance. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I also have a list. Also of... in attendance. Yes. Would you please give us those who are also in attendance? Sure. Alderman <laughs> Kelly. Sure. Let's make sure Thank I got you. everyone. I see Alderman um, Wilshire. I see Alderman Dowd, Alderman Klee. Um, I also see Director Photo, um, Dan Hudson, and Superintendent Boucher. Am I missing anyone? CFO Griffin. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> CFO Griffin is also with us. Thank you. And Matt Sullivan, the plan manager, is here as well. Yeah. And Matt Sullivan. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Carolyn okay. O'Connor, the finance and admin manager. Thank you. It's hard okay. to catch everyone That's with like half names. Okay. okay. Thank you. So we will go to uh, public comment. Uh, it's important that when, before you speak, that you please give your name and address so the transcriber knows who is speaking at any given time. And uh, we'll go from there. 
So Alderman Kelly, do you see anyone that has raised their hand for public comment? I'm going to take a look. I just wanted to note for the record that I saw Director Marsha join us and Alderman Liu um, as well. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so if anyone would want to make public comment, please either raise your hand electronically or um, to the video. And I'll just mention it one more time. I actually don't see anyone, Alderman Karen. Okay, then we will go to communications, please. A communication from uh, Director Photo, Director of Public Works, referral from the Board of Aldermen, um, 020040. And there is a, a communication from John Griffin, CFO, uh, regarding wastewater rate revenue requirements analysis. Okay, so there be no objection. I will accept the communications and place them on file. Do we have in interviews today? None. Applications to Hawkers license? There are none. Okay, so we will go to appointment by the mayor, Alderwoman Kelly. I'd like to move um, for final passage to recommend the following um, confirmation reappointment to the Business and Industrial Development Authority, Lydia Foley, with a term to expire September 13th, 2023. The following reappointment to the Cable Television Advisory Board, Andrew Cernati, with a term to expire January 1st, 2024. The following reappointment to the Cultural Connections Committee, Eric Drurart with a term to expire December 31st, 2023. The following reappointments to the Downtown Improvement Committee, Mary Lou Blaisdell and Richard Lannon with terms to expire December 31st, 2023. The following reappointment to the Nashua Arts Commission, Jennifer Anand and with a term to expire February 1st, 2024. The following reappointment to the Nashua Housing and Redevelopment Authority, Thomas Monahan with a term to expire October 31st, 2025. And the following reappointment to the Zoning Board of Adjustment, Jay Minkara, with a term to expire September 11th, 2023, by roll call. Okay. Uh, does anyone from the committee have any questions, concerns? Okay. If not, will um, the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez isn't here. Alderman Kelly says yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. And our chairwoman, Karen. Yes. Okay. Here. So that so those reappointments um, have been confirmed. Thank you. Uh, unfinished business. We have none. New business resolution. There are none. Okay, new business ordinances. We have before us tonight O2040 um, regarding increasing sewage use fees, rates, and charges. And I will I will move to recommend final passage by roll call. Okay, fine. Um, Director Photo, I I know you're there. So are you going to give a quick presentation to the committee or are you sending it over to Mr. Griffith? I am going to um, say just a few words and then I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Griffin to go over uh, the rate study if that's okay. I'll that's fine. Thank you. All yes, right. that's fine. Thank okay. you. Um, so uh, good evening, uh, Alderman Karen and members of the Personal Administrative Affairs Committee. Uh, I just want to introduce who is with me this evening. Uh, Frank Ayotte, is here. He's our consultant from Hazen and Sawyer. David Boucher, who's the superintendent of wastewater. Noel Osborne, who wasn't mentioned earlier, uh, who is our operations supervisor at the wastewater treatment plant. Jan Hudson, our city engineer. Carolyn O'Connor, who is our finance and administrative manager for public works. And of course, John Griffin, our, our CFO. On December 8th, at a special board of aldermen meeting, Frank Ayotte uh, presented um, uh, provided a presentation on sewer user fees. Uh, you have that presentation, I believe you should all have that. 
and our CFO also sent you the rate study. We are happy to go over that presentation again if, if you'd like, but I think um, maybe to start um, with your permission, Olive and Karen, it will make sense for uh, CFO Griffin to begin with uh, going over the rate study. And we'll be happy to answer any questions after that. Okay, that's fine. So CFO Griffin, are you prepared to uh, give us an overview? Yes, um, would it be possible, uh, Madam Chair, to share my screen? Certainly, if you can, that'd be great. Okay. Let me see what I can do here. <coughs> can everybody see this particular worksheet? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we can. So, I thought I would give uh, start off the presentation instead of the um, where all the work is done as Alderman Dowd mentioned the, the one that you have to have magnifying glasses to see but this this one here is a good worksheet that we presented over the last several rate increases back when I first came in 2010 uh, my predecessor in the form of Mayor Lozo, uh, Mr. Gildar and Mayor Lozo, they, they put together an increase for the first time in a while. And that increase is shown on line nine in 2010, which was a 20%, 27% increase. And that was volumetric only. And we'll get into a little bit of that. This is the demand charge associated with the size of the meter. And there's the volumetric rate designed to capture the pricing of the flow. But what we found out when I was asked by certain members of the Board of Aldermen at that time, how come the, the increase was so large and why did we come back again in 2012? As you can see, there was a, there was a decrease, there was a sizable balance in the net unrestricted balance of the fund. And there was a 27% decrease in the volumetric charge. Simultaneous to that, those of us that were here or, or learned from the former city engineer, there was a change in the approach and the cost associated with the CSO initiatives, combined sewer uh, overflow. Um, and that created a significant drain on the cash position of the fund. So as you can see from, from 05 through 09, we actually got ourselves into a negative position. So not to do that again, we don't generally have rate increases every year. Uh, most utilities, you're familiar with Penichuk, you're familiar with Energy North and uh, um, uh, the gas company and um, Eversource, they, they generally go in for rate increases every several years. So there were some questions on what have we done recently and why are we here before you today? So if you look at the net balance, you can see that it decreased from 10 to 11, back up in 12, significantly back up with the rate increase in 14. The other thing we did, this is a cash analysis. This isn't an income statement like a regular corporation. We ended up bonding or borrowing, I should say, the, the, the $14 million worth of, that we had, the, sorry, $12 million that we hadn't bonded when we first built the wet weather facility. So that really gave us a shot in the arm. So in 2014, the balance was about 17.7, which is very healthy. Several years passed, we came in right, right around the time uh, Mayor Donches took his role in the beginning of 2016, 17. We had another increase, 15% increase, both demand and volumetric. And that put us in good stead from that time till now we were recommending that we have another increase back-to-back -back increases of 20% and 15% in the 2021 today, uh, this, this year and 2022. To get the balances, as you can see, into the 22, 23, 24 frame, get it back up to a, uh, a comfortable amount of net assets within the fund. We're not, it, we're not trying to earn anything on this fund. We're, we're trying to make sure that the net assets of the fund exceed the liabilities of the fund. So I thought I would share that with you to, to give you a perspective that with a 470,000 estimated end of 
fiscal year 2021, it really wouldn't recommend limiting the amount of the increase or deferring the amount of the increase as this fund being an enterprise fund is predominantly funded by user fees, very little other fees that, that uh, we can generate. And um, Mr. Ayod in his presentation spoke very clearly about that, uh, that, that source of revenue for the fund. The fund is basically designed for the users of the service to pay for the services that are expensed within the fund. So that would be, if we could go back, I'm gonna see if I can unshare my screen, unless there's any questions, Madam Chair, if, you, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Okay, so while we have this up, does anyone from the committee have any questions? Yes, I, I do. Okay, Alderman Clemens. Thank you. So I guess my question is, and maybe maybe I'm jumping the gun because maybe you were going to get into this, but um, why in this chart doesn't really explain um, why there is a need for uh, the increases that that we have, um, you know, each time. The one that where they decreased that way up top there in 2004, I can understand because, you know, if you reduce the amount of money you're, you're taking in, obviously the, the fund's not going to keep up. But I guess where I'm, what I'm asking is why, why are we, why do we need an increase, I guess, in the charge in order to keep this fund balance where it's at? Because if you think about it, we um, we increase. I guess is it because we only do it every so often, every few years? Um, if I may, Madam Chair, uh, I can answer that uh, in a couple of ways. Uh, number one is I'm <laughs> going to my my very next slide, and it's that one that's very difficult to deal with, but I'll try to um, expand it. But the the costs associated with the fund predominantly significant investments in infrastructure resulting in debt service payments far outpace any increase in this fund. Now, the other thing you have to keep in mind, this isn't a growth fund. What I mean by that is the city of Nashua is pretty much well all built out and the charges, the volumetric charges um, associated with the residentials in particular are based on Penichuk water usage for the period October through March of each year. So if you can imagine, and that's why we recommended in 2010, that the rate increase in 2012, not to just go volumetric because people are actually conserving water as well. So if you're thinking you're gonna get income, we are in a rate increase from just the usage we found that in that time frame in 2011, we weren't getting the revenues that we had expected. So that's why we went with the demand and volumetric. But the next, the next slide I will show you is the, or the next uh, worksheet is the, um, the increases in the costs that drive down to the bottom, which is gonna result in these bal ending balances. But, and then you can ask some good questions on that. Okay. I will say that as Mr. Rayard indicated and under the management of Lisa Frodo and the team, the operational costs have, have been modest, the increases. Um, it's, the, it's the infrastructure costs. You're replacing old infrastructure, some pipes of which have been in the system for 75, 80, 100 years. It's more costly to increase those. Therefore, the cost of the debt service is really the the particular issue and, and we tried to articulate that, but I'll, I'm going to stop sharing and then reshare if that's okay. So if I go. Okay. Does anyone else have a question? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is this Alderman uh, Cleaver? Um, no, that was um, CFO Griffin still. I oh, okay. I'm looking okay. for other hands from committee or Alderman on the call, the okay. elder endowed. Yeah, just a, a couple of things. Um, 
one, uh, do we have a corresponding infrastructure plan year to year to anticipate our yearly expenditures? Uh, I can't believe that these things are catastrophic events that drive this kind of cost. The other thing is, we ha have we ever considered taking the historical data that you showed on that sheet and coming up with a with an average and maybe even, if necessary, a yearly increase, but a much lower increase? I, I'm not sure that the LO, some people might disagree. I'm not sure that the increased cost to the average homeowner um, would be too shocking, although 20% pretty high. Um, but I'll tell you right now, having been on a board of a condo association, you kill condo associations yearly budget. Because you're, you're asking for this to be applied the first of January, their budgets are already out for 2021. Now you're hitting them with a 20% increase in costs. They don't plan for that unless you tell them way ahead. And, and then you know, if, if this goes out, you know, they, they can plan for next January. But I'm thinking a lot of the condo associations are you're going to cripple their uh, their yearly budget, um, possibly even driving special assessments. Um, so, I, in my, my way of thinking, uh, I'd like to see us be able to plan ahead and say, okay, right now. We need an increase in January 1st of 2021, not a couple of days ago. Uh, to me, that's, that's uh, really impacting a large group of places here in Nashville. We have a lot of condo associations. So I guess I'd like to get some feedback on that. And, and, uh, and it, you know, uh, when I'm looking across the, the expenditures and the increases and decreases, I'd like to believe that there is a, a infrastructure plan that anticipates costs out two or three years and not, you know, all of a sudden we're out of money, so we got to raise it in retrospect. So if somebody could address that, I'd appreciate it. I can take a shot. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. And, Griffin. Yeah, so th this particular analysis is the analysis of operations. It's, it basically lays out from a cash position all of the revenues and costs associated with the operation. The ensuing schedules B and C, that lays out the plan, Alderman Dow, that you were um, wondering or, or requesting. The plan goes out several years, not two or three years. Um, but we can get into that as we go forward with the schedules. But essentially what we're doing is we're taking a, a pretty static revenue base and increasing it by, on January 1st as opposed to July 1st. Um, as you can see on line seven, those are the increases that would provide the needed revenue to result in a bottom line that's positive. As we go forward, we have expenditures, predominantly personnel related and operation and maintenance costs associated with the plant and the operations of the sewer mains and services throughout the city. Then we have non-operating expenses and that's the reserve for replacements. We have just similar to a capital equipment reserve fund, we have a wastewater equipment reserve fund that was most recently redesigned a few years ago, which tells us that we need to fund $1.6 million a year to make sure we have enough money in the fund to systematically and timely replace equipment in the plant, especially, but also throughout the system, the pumping stations, et cetera. Um, we, need, we need those dollars to fund that effort. Buildings and improvements, pretty typical half a million for this size operation. And the debt service payments, I've highlighted this particular uh, line as this shows the increase as we continue to invest in a number of infrastructure related projects. 
this shows the debt service increasing pretty significantly over the next um, several years from 5 million in 2020 to about 9 million in 2025. As you recall, a few years ago, you approved, the Board of Aldermen approved a comprehensive paving program. And part of that program, there was, a, there was a significant interest on the part of the Alderman at the time to make sure that we didn't pave roads and then have to dig them up a few years later because the sewer pipes needed replacement. So I know Mr. Hudson and Director Photo can explain that a little bit more detail, but that's why there's an increase in the sewer infrastructure expenses to keep pace with the $7.5 million worth of paving we're doing every year. Yeah, a follow-up. Uh, if, if you're able to project out this many years on the, you know, and, and the, the paving project started about three years ago, I believe. We may even be in the fourth year, I'm not sure. Right. But have, were we not able to project uh, the situation that's gonna put us in for a 20% raise this year with no increases over the last couple of years, rather than having gradual increases, um, you know, People, I don't, I don't dispute the infrastructure costs. I, I am having a problem with the planning, the financial planning that drives us to all of a sudden have to put a 20% increase to keep from going negative on our, on our fund balance. Uh, if you can project out the 2025, we should have been projecting five years ago and, and balancing these levels so that we don't have to have such a dire increase. Um, and uh, I, I guess the other thing is, you know, I, I know some of the aldermen are considering, you know, that we should space this out and not hit a 20% increase the January 1st. Um, I don't know if that's feasible or, or what, but I still think I'd like to find out why we can't do a better balance planning on this account so that we don't have to have these dramatic increases. First thing I saw when you had your previous sheet is the 27% reduction. We should have never done that. We should have kept a large balance in that account and I know where people are coming from because the it has to be the money goes different places. But without getting into that, um, we need to know how much we need to have in this count on a continuing basis and level out the increases to account for that amount. Um, I know the paving project caused a lot of street infrastructure to be torn up and replaced. Granted, I saw some of those pipes, they were ridiculous. But when we did the bonding for the paving, we should have taken that into account. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, it doesn't look like we did. So I, I, I'm just looking for a little more information on how can we not have these kind of increases going forward? Um, may I speak just for a moment, um, Alderman Karen? Yes, you may, okay. Director Fowler. Thank you. So, um, Alderman Dowd, um, just to put it in, in, in perspective, we, we, you, you scare me when you use words like dire <laughs> increases. Um, the, it's, it's $15.83 per quarter um, on average. Um, so, it, it's not, that's $15 per quarter. So, it's 20% sounds like an enormous amount of money, but, but it is, it is, um, you know, every, any amount of money is a lot of money. Right. But, but it, but it's, it's not, it's not as bad as um, that, that might appear. Now, what really has put us in this position um, is back in, in, I believe it was 2004, 2006, um, when not only was the fund reduced, but all of the retained earnings were spent. There's about 26 or $27 million in retained earnings that should have been used 
right now in the future to fund the plan and that that didn't happen the money the money was all spent on on honestly i think things that uh, and this goes back you know prior um certainly to this administration spent on things that probably shouldn't have been spent on and i think if we if we had had that money um yes we we could have probably had more uh, modest increases uh, we have done exceptional planning for the treatment plan i, I just I, I i want to say that we have done an, we have done an incredible amount of work we've we've replaced pumps we've um, made improvements to the blower buildings the aeration basins have been replaced the clarifiers have been replaced we've done half of the pump stations we've done the heating and hvc system at the plant um, we've done upgrades to wet weather we've done all of headworks we've done a lot of work and that that and some of that drives of course um, these costs that that we're seeing today. Um, could, now there are also a couple of other things, three other things really that that are that drive this, and that and that's we have two new permits that we have not even been issued yet, um, and those are both uh, EPA permits, and we we really wanted to get a better understanding, as much info as we could, uh, prior to raising fees, so that, that we understood exactly where we needed uh, to be. We also have a consent decree that we, we, we are currently renegotiating. That's not finalized by any stretch. Um, we've, we've just upgraded wet weather. Um, once we see how our whole process um, is, uh, is operating how our, in, in, our, in our collection system, then we'll have a better understanding of what else we need to do from there. So, so there were a lot of factors um, that are um, sort of driving uh, these increases. And, and yes, certainly, there could have been um, smaller increases, uh, but I, the net result would have been the same. We, we still would have needed uh, this money. And, and again, I, I just, it's a very corrosive environment. Um, I think it's very dangerous for us not to fund this properly because it's not only capital that we're talking about now, it's also just the general operating costs of this plan. And this plan is, is, our, is our city's most important asset um, if we don't if this plant isn't running properly we don't have any place else to send our wastewater um, so I, I just want to I, I think we, we need to be very cautious about how we um, how we do this we certainly can look to the future and having uh, smaller increases um, and, and on a more regular basis um, that 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 isn't something that we've really if you look at the schedule we've we've gone to sort of um, a little bit larger increases, a little less frequently, um, but we certainly could look at different ways to fund it. But I, I just, you know, I, it is only, it's $15 a quarter uh, on average. So, um, and then and then the next year is about $14.25 uh, per quarter. So um, again, I, I think that these are not unreasonable increases to be able to fund, um, you know, the city, the city's most important asset. I could have a follow up, Alderman Karen. Yes, you may, Alderman Dow. And then you have Alderman. Yeah, Karen. first of all, I would never uh, say anything negative about the work that, that your department does. They do a phenomenal job. And I'm certainly not touching on, on any of, of that because you do what you need to do to keep the city moving and, and safe. And uh, that, that's not the issue. But and a, you know, uh, I think what you said was a was it a thirty dollar a quarter or a sixty? It's fifteen fifteen dollars and eighty three cents to be exact. So it's sixty dollars a year for for the average homeowner. But a condo association association like the one I live in, that's a thirty thousand dollar hit on one line item. And. The question I have is, is um, so 30, you know, it, it, you know, condo associations budget very tightly. And while they might have contingency, it's usually for things that they anticipate coming up. So condo associations are a lot different than regular homeowners. Having said that, with the COVID going on, we have a lot of homeowners that 60 bucks is probably very important right now. So I'm, I'm not negating the potential or the need for it. Uh, I'm just saying that we've got to come up with a better way 
of planning what we need for a balance in that account and never falling below that balance and planning ahead a year or two for any increases in the amount. I would like to believe we have the brain trust that we could do that, both from the infrastructure side on planning ahead and on the financial side for knowing what we need in there and how we can keep it in there. To drop to uh, that other chart you had like 400,000 or something, instead of having like 15 million, that's a huge difference. And we can't plan like that. We've got to plan better. I, I, as far as what we do with, with this increase right now, uh, I don't know, I'm not on this committee for one thing. But uh, I will tell you that uh, I, I do have concerns over the amount being asked for right now. I don't know if we can spread it out, um, you know, but uh, it, it just concerns me. And I, I think that we need to see a plan going forward that mitigates and levels this out, go, you know, year to year. We can't have these kind of increases. Alderman Karen. Are you all done? Yes. Uh, if I could go. Please. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, go ahead, Alderman Kelly. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so I want to piggyback a little bit on what Alderman Dowd is saying. I think everything, you know, what you've put forward and what needs to happen makes a lot of sense. I think from a planning perspective, I have issue with us putting this in two weeks before the end of the year and then implementing it the next month where you know nobody really gets the opportunity to understand and also comment on this stuff. Um, I assume we knew before December that this needed to happen. So my request would be that in the future, we give us more time to talk about this. Um, I think it's especially when it's directly affecting taxpayers, we need to give enough time to have that discussion. Okay, Alderman Kelly, is there anyone else? Alderman Clemens. Okay, Alderman Clemens. Thank you. Um, yeah, I would agree with the previous two speakers. Um, but I guess I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to wrap my head around how how so the costs have gone up 22 percent since the last time we've raised the since the last time we've raised the rates is that essentially what what we're saying here because i'm trying to figure out how i'm trying to figure out why why we're doing 22 percent and where that's coming from. Like, why is it that, you know, we have millions of dollars, uh, like we have $6 million in there, but then it's down to 470. Where, wh why is that, why is the rate that we have right now not keeping up, we're not keeping pace with, is it the debt service? Is that the reason why? Um, if I may, Madam Chair, and I can, uh, go up to line yep. 41, Alderman Clemens. See where it says net surplus deficit from capital project and expenditures. That's a 4 million three hit. Which, which line? This would be line 41 where it says net surplus. Are, are you are you seeing? Hopefully? Yep, yep, I can see your screen. Yep. So those are the two drivers. In other words, the revenues are less than the costs of the program. So there's a $4.3 million drain in fiscal 20, and then another 2.8 in 21. And as we put in the rate increase it, it, and do some other things like bond instead of pay cash for, for items, that helps us in fiscals 22, 23. And then we're back to the same problem in, in 24. I guess my question is why are we, with rates the way that they are, why are we using almost $8 million in 
or $7 million in cash when we could stabilize that over 20 years doing a bond payment and keep that cash in reserve. Right. As, as you may recall from your, your review of the wastewater budget, there's certain items that are more annual that Director Photo can speak to and uh, civil en uh, city engineer Hudson, but uh, some are they're just not they're capital projects, but they're not considered, they weren't considered bondable or, or using a, a state revolving loan fund debt. That's what we're doing. If you look at line 31, mm -hmm. we're, we're not using any cash in those two years for, for the next two years. So can I ask another question? So is are, are we basically, this fund here, are we, are we basically, um, so what you're saying is that, that because be, thinking at it from a property tax perspective, and perhaps that's, that's definitely not the way to look at it because it's a user fee, but the, but, you know, when we, when we budget annually for the, for property taxes, right, we take in the exact amount of money that, that we spend. And so I'm, I guess what I'm asking is, I'm questioning why we're not do why that isn't the same process here. It, it hasn't been, it yeah. hasn't been the process. Um, if I may, um, we could certainly shift to that, which we're going to do in the next two years, taking things that were historically paid for with cash and bonding them. Um, at the end of the day, you still have to pay back the bondholders or the, or the loan holders. Um, we could definitely add, um, when we get, when we see the 8.17 million as a balance on line 55 a few years out, we could put in a modest increase for several years and keep track of it in that basis. We could do that. Well, it, it just seems to me that, that you'd want to keep up with the demand um, projections rather than like you said, rather than look at this and then see the balance going down in those later years. Um, I mean, that's, you know, to me, at least that that is not ideal. And that's what happens when and then because we do that, then we end up, you know, having the situation that Alderman Dowd was talking about, which is, you know, we end up with these 22, 23 percent, 27 percent increases um so yeah i mean i i would like to see a more uh, uniform uh way to budget this uh that you know if you have to come before us every year to give us a a, a 10 year projection or a, or a whatever it is a 5 year projection and that's what you do when you come before us and you say okay we got to adjust the rate by a dollar I mean, people would rather, I, I would think people would rather pay a dollar a quarter every year than 15. It's just a, I, I don't know. I, at least that way we can kind of budget and know and see what, what the future um, brings. And not to say that we don't now, but what basically we're seeing here is, is large increases every so often um, to keep that up to date. So uh, I guess I would just emphasize what the previous two speakers have, have said in that we should think about doing this a different way. Thank you, Alderman Clements. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to speak that's not on the committee? I would, Alderman Karen. Yes, okay, Alderman Kelly. Um, so my question is directed to um, Superintendent Bouchard. Um, I just wanted to see if you could give us, I know you've talked about it a ton. I know you're at our meetings all the time, but I just wanted to dig in a little bit about the capital improvements and how much of that has been, you know, sort of circumstantial you bringing on. There was some issues with some of the product and, and if that will stabilize over time as well. So if you could just talk a little bit about that, I think that would be helpful too. Okay, can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay. Superintendent Boucher, 
just to kind of give you a brief, uh, so you kind of know what the wastewater facility is about. You know, it's a facility that runs 24 seven. And by nature, the wastewater that comes in is corrosive. It's got bleach in it, cleaning products, waste from industries and commercial businesses. Uh, human waste has got ammonia in it, high ammonia. So it's, plus it, we get sand, rocks, debris that comes in. So all these things are corrosive to the, the infrastructure, uh, our pumps, it's a lot of wear and tear. Uh, we have aged equipment that needs to be uh, upkept. Some of it needs to be replaced. Uh, we're modifying and adding new processes to meet new or more stringent regulations. Uh, we also put in redundancies because the, the facility can't shut down. But uh, over the years, we've done a lot of projects. Just in the three years that I've been there, uh, you know, we've had over a dozen major capital projects. Uh, I, I, Director Photo has touched on a lot of them. Uh, a lot of it is just infrastructure that needs to be upkept. Uh, just a few of them I have, uh, we had a water booster station on site that's been rehabilitated, brought above ground, and this boosts water pressure throughout the wastewater facility so we can maintain the pressure. Uh, we're currently finishing up a primary clarifier upgrade that's upgrading the infrastructure of five tanks, uh, an energy recovery facility upgrade that we're trying to finalize this year. And that's involved in uh, putting in two brand new generators that can uh, utilize our biogas along with natural gas to power part of our facility. Um, we're, we're finalizing a pump station upgrade, six of the pump stations out of 13 pump stations in the city. Uh, so that's gone well. We did an HVAC upgrade. Uh, the wet weather facility, we had a main piston upgrade uh, last year and we just were finalizing the um, screen upgrades uh, in that facility. Uh, we also had the digester gas tank uh, painting upgrade and diaphragm change out in, in that tank. That's also a large project. But all these things are, you know, have gone well just to benefit the facility. And uh, we're all, I also like to mention that we're putting together a, uh, we're working with an engineering firm and we're doing a 20 year facility plan. Uh, it's a living document. The engineering firm has been working with my staff, myself. We've gone through all the different processes in the facility, uh, looking at the current state of the facility. We're looking at new regulations that are coming down the line. Uh, so we'll be able to plan ahead and, and look at, you know, what needs to be done. Hopefully we can move stuff around so we don't see the sharp increases in uh, uh, rate increases throughout the future. But this is a 20 year outlook. Uh, so if something is, is dire, we can put it, you know, at the front of the plate and uh, move stuff around, move projects around. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes, uh, like Director Photo said, we get two permits. Uh, we try to look at the needs uh, that we're going to have for these new permits, but it's hard to tell. Uh, sometimes when you get a new permit, it tells you to do something the facility wasn't designed to do, and we have to change things up. So it's just but the, the facility is doing well. Uh, but like I said, it's, it's a, a constant upkeep. I don't know if I, if you've got any other questions or I can answer uh, some. Yeah, if I could follow up, Alderman Kern. Yes, you may. Yeah, I think that was a really good overview of all of the projects that are in the works. And I, again, I appreciate your hard work and making all of that happen. Um, you don't have to answer this now, but I just, <laughs> What my question was, like, how many of those were like maintenance you're going to see every five years kind of thing? And how many of those projects were, you know, something happened to the digester, it was more of an emergency, we probably won't see it for 20 years kind of thing. And I think it's just more of a planning to the um, comments of previous aldermen, like if we can plan for some of this, yeah. not it's going to be able to plan, but what can we plan for? Yeah, some things you can plan for, uh, like the digester diaphragm upgrade. We know that the diaphragm lasts about 10 years, so we can pre-plan that one. Uh, and, and tank painting, we try to pre-plan for that. Um, 
the infrastructure inside a tank. You know, there's general maintenance. Uh, the, the current project we were doing was a redesign of the tank. So it wasn't just replacing the infrastructure. It was redesigning it so it could perform better for us, uh, remove sludge uh, better because it was hanging up and causing process problems. So some of these are, are we know the life expectancy. I think on your screen there, we've got a, a wastewater equipment replacement uh, fund. So a lot of that stuff, a lot of that equipment that's tied into these projects, uh, we kind of give a life expectancy to it. And, and we know when it's near the end of life. Uh, so we can pre-plan ahead. Okay, and this year we're gonna need to replace uh, all these things. We can take a look at it, see if we can push out some, but um, I don't know if that, that answered your question or. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hello. Boucher. Anyone else? I have a question. Alderman Lou. Alderman Lou? Yes. Yes, you may. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to be certain. I know that um, I have questions and uh, I'd be happy to ask them, but um, I just am wondering if uh, Director Griffin will be finishing his his presentation because I I didn't want to ask questions that were going to be covered anyway. So uh, you know, should I go ahead and ask my questions or just allow the presentation to be completed? Okay, uh, CFO Griffin, do you have uh, more to add to your presentation? I would uh, at this point. I would. Uh, Suggest that all the woman Lou ask the questions and we okay. may, we may touch on the okay. exhibits, but it's, I think we've covered a lot. Right. Of them. Thank you. Okay, Great. thank, thank you. you. Okay, all the woman Lou, you may ask your question. Okay, thank you. Um, You're welcome. Because I thought, I thought, um, all, uh, Director Griffin, you were going to go through the the items that uh, the exceptional items that at, that uh, created the shortage. Um, what I haven't heard, or um, I, I understand um, that we that uh, the wastewater uh, plant has done a lot, and um, you know I understand that. And uh, however, I think what you're telling us, it, it seems to me that we're we're concerned about a lack of planning, um, and. And we're being told that, uh, I mean, these items, aren't they the, the business of running a, a wastewater plant? You know, the items that you've described to us. And I don't mean to sound rude, but um, that's the business of the wastewater plant, I believe. And what we're concerned about is the, um, you know, going from you know, going from 400 down to $400,000. I'm also concerned about in 2025, we'll be back at $4,000. So, uh, four, 4 million, I'm sorry. Um, so I, I wondered about that item on um, the first page that attorney, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Director Griffin um, talked about, but I'm wondering if, if um, Mr. Boucher, you can, or somebody can address the EPA regulations that may have uh, changed the um, environment for us and cost us money. Um, and I, if you could also clarify what the permits, uh, that we got two permits. Um, I'm new to the board and I'm not sure what that means to us. Okay. So CFO Griffin, would you be able to answer Alderman Lou's first question concerning the work? Certainly. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to, hopefully I can continue to share this. But if everyone can see Line eight, annual sewer infrastructure improvements. That number used to be a million three and we pay for it in cash. 
Now it's upwards of five million a year to be bonded. So um, it spreads out when we bond or we get an SRF loan, we spread out the debt service over 20 years. And at some point it, it catches up with the cost. So the, I would say that the cost of the infrastructure that Director Photo, Superintendent Boucher and others have mentioned, that's, that's the driving factor for a business that does not have an increase in revenue if the rates don't go up. A lot of times I, I was in a utility for 25 years and I was the VP of rates. We never had annual rate increases because the residents wouldn't, the, the, the um, rate payers wouldn't take it. They wouldn't, they wouldn't be interested. They wanted to fight that in Massachusetts through the attorney general's office. So it's a little different here. I think we can come up with something that's, that's more manageable, but as director photo indicated, whether it's 20% today, a little bit more tomorrow, the, the numbers are going to add up to about the same percentage to get a balance that's reasonable in the fund. So I guess in summary, uh, all the woman Lou, it's that it's not only the projects that director uh, superintendent Boucher mentioned, but it's that sewer infrastructure that's trying to mitigate collapsing of pipes and things like that. Um, and, and as um, city engineer Hudson will talk about, and he talks about it at length, most of the meetings I attend is that hammering of the pipes underground to make sure we can identify problems before they start. So it's very comprehensive, but um, you know, a lot of these things that are discussed tonight, we can take into account and, and model. But it, it could be an, an annual increase in the, in the uh, you know, by ordinance in the, in the, in the wastewater sewer rates. It could be. There's no pro prohibition against it. Alderman Karen, may I speak? Certainly, Director. Okay, to um, one of the things that we could do, Alderman Karen, I, I'm hearing a lot of questions that were answered in um, our consultant Frank Ayotte's presentation. So we're happy to go through that again if 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 the if your uh, committee wishes. Um, but there's a there's a number of things that when we talk about the um, our permits um, and, and EPA. So. All, all the two permits and the consent decree that we're currently under are all um, from the EPA. So if, if I just speak to the consent decree uh, first, um, we, we many years ago, the city decided to develop a CSO program rather than fully separating as Manchester did. So right now we're in the evaluation phase of our CSO program um, to determine how well our collection system um, is now operating as a result of all of the CSO improvements that we did. So once we do that, there will be next steps that the EPA will require us to do. We, I don't, we don't know what those are yet because we haven't fully tested our system. So there definitely will be costs associated um, with that. There will, there will likely be in areas where we're still having um, issues, overflow issues. They don't wanna see our CSOs overflow. Um, likely we'll have to separate in some of those areas. We're hoping that's gonna be minimal once wet weather is, is operating uh, at full capacity, but, but that's, one, that's one area. The other thing is um, with our new permits, we're gonna have more, the, the requirements are becoming more and more stringent. For instance, we have to build a phosphorus removal and storage facility for a million dollars. Um, the other thing, and, and again, um, Frank Ayotte and, and Dave Boucher can speak more to this, but we also, as, as a result of our, our permit, we have what's called a CMOM plan, uh, which is capacity management operation and something like that. Um, and that's what, that's 5.2 million. Now that part of that is um, cameraing our, all of our lines, determining what lines need to be replaced, um, cleaning, uh, catch basin cleaning, um, all of that, looking at our whole collection system and the maintenance of that, our pump stations. So that, that's another thing that's driven by our permit. But also there were a lot of operational expenses that are also driven by our permit because we've got to keep our plant operating. It's a very corrosive environment. So there are upgrades that we are required to do in order for us to be able to stay in compliance with our permit. We, we, we have kept up with those improvements and that what we're seeing now with which CFO Griffin has mentioned is 
um, we now we have a significant amount of debt service because a lot of that has been bonded. So now we're having to, um, you know, to to pay those bond payments. Um, so, I, I you know we were put in a tough position when all the retained earnings uh, were spent. Um, I, I, I you know we, we all wish that hadn't happened, and certainly um, there are other we, we could have you know, smaller increases more frequently. There's a number of ways that. Um, that we that we could structure this, um, but I, I just I don't want anybody to think that there has been a tremendous amount of of effort and planning that has gone on by a large number of people, um, and and we we do we do know what our costs are, and you know we certainly could um, give more modest increases more frequently if if that's what the uh, the board desires. So Alderman Lou, I hope that answers some of your question. Uh, yeah, just to follow up, um, direct a photo. I wasn't clear that, um, but you, you answered my question, but by what does that mean? I meant financially, um, but thank you for uh, giving me the whole rundown. Um, so a lot of, so a lot of the, a lot of items are relatively recent. For instance, the uh, recent uh, requirements of the permit of our permit. Is that correct? It's it's really a combination. Uh, there are some requirements of of the permit, um, Alderman Lou, definitely. Um, but it's also uh, it's also operational maintenance. So the things that would be in our WERF plan that need to be funded um, as well. So so the general. Uh, the, the maintenance we we have just we've gone through a period um fairly recently within the last six or seven years where we've had we've had to do a lot of upgrades just because uh, much of our equipment was at end of life so we we've we've had to spend if you if you look back six or seven years i, I don't think cfo griffin is prepared to, to do that but you you can see that we've we've spent um a lot of money just upgrading um our equipment and making sure that we have redundancy, making sure that we have other proper pumps. It's, it's a very expensive uh, facility to operate in, as you can, as you can well imagine. Just one follow-up, please. Um, yes, you may. Uh, Chairman, thank you. Um, so it, these 10 uh, pages of um, uh, estimated effective lives that, of every component of the system, um, it sounds like that is all planned out. So that would not be unexpected costs, but then you say we need to up, that we, we have upgraded. So are you saying instead of simply replacing, we've had to upgrade, say, uh, incur expenses that are higher than our, our scheduled replacements appear to be? Is that what you're no. saying? No, no, I'm not saying that at all. I, I, I'm saying that we have, we have a very uh, well thought out plan um, that and we actually have two consultants, Frank Ayotte is one of them. Um, we also have Wright Pierce. Um, and we have, we have looked at this very closely and our, the costs are not unexpected at all. They, they are, they're very well planned and thought out. Um, thank you. The only item that hasn't been answered is is that in four years it looks, um, Director Griffin, like we're going to be back to four million. Is is that not lower than uh, we want to be ever again? Um, Madam Chair, I can respond to that. Please do. Uh, yeah, that just shows you, uh, all the woman Lou, the degradation in the fund balance where the revenue is stable because there's no growth and the costs are going up, i.e. the debt service associated with the infrastructure capital improvements. What we could do is embed in that, in, in, the, in another ordinance, the modest increases that Director Photo mentioned for three, four, five percent to keep that balance up more than four million at the end of this period, the fiscal twenty-five. Okay, thank you. I'm all set. Yeah, the one, th the one thing I would say is, if the fund balance has a balance, it it means that the ratepayers don't have money in their, in their wallets, right? 
So there's a, there's a trade-off between a, a fund balance that's positive and how much the fund balance should be. We've always thought that <clears throat> if we can run operate, if we can run it at a positive net net restricted fund balance, we, we were doing okay. Thank you very much to both of you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? Alderman Clemens yeah. has his hand up. And Alderman okay. Lushar does as well. She may have been there longer. I'm sorry, I didn't see you, Lori. Right. Okay. So we'll go Alderman Clemens and then we'll do Alderman Wilshire. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. I um, have um, a question about the legislation before us. So, uh, so it, it would be effective January 1st, 2021. Is that correct? Yes. Um, what would happen to these estimates if it was put off by two quarters? Um, you lose, so if you go back to the first page. This is a PDF, Alderman Clemens, so just what would yep. happen is the 14, that 1.4 million would not be there. Would it be at zero or where like it would be zero because that's 10% of 20%. That's half a year. So so, so we would in the end though, we would be we would be at a um we wouldn't be in the negative. Let's go down below here. Bear with me for a second. So the 470 would be minus 1.4 million. It's not the end okay. of the world if it's negative. I mean, it's it's there's no regu there's no requirement that I know of that it needs to be positive. Yeah, but as I mean, as, I, as a plan, as long as there's a plan to get it positive, you but, have the six million dollar negative balance in 2009. So if it had a negative balance at the end, because that's the end of 2021, right? Right. What would the balance then look like, I guess, the next year? It would be down by a million or be, so? It would be a million. You'd, you'd never recover the million four. Okay. So you so instead of the 4.678 down at the bottom, you'd be at like three. Right. You see how, you see uh, Alderman Clemens, how it goes from, it goes on line six, it goes up to 17.2. Yep. That's the 2.8 plus the 14.3. That's the, the math. I guess I'm looking at the bottom line. At the bottom line, you'd, loo you'd lose the, um, we, the, next, the next number would be a million four reduction as well. Okay. So we'd still be in the positive though at the end of that year. At the end of the next year, correct. I, I might suggest to the committee that, that we do that. And the only reason being is that Alderman Dowd brought up a very good point. And that is that the condo associations have their fee schedule, or I'm sorry, their um, budgets planned out already. Um, and, you know, we can, if we're really serious about looking into stabilizing these rates and doing them over a certain amount of time, then really we would still be in a good position to do that. And then we also wouldn't have to put these condos um, associations at risk either. Um, because I would assume that, you know, it would at least give them a half a year to plan to, to modify their budgets or um, use some of the contingency for the incoming fee. Um, so it's just something to think about, I guess. Thank you. Okay. Ma Madam Thank Chair, you all. Madam Chair. I'm sorry. Uh, John Griffin, CFO, I'd like to. Sure, go uh, ahead. Thank you. So, so we, if I just want to make sure I, I understand, if we did the increase effective July 1st, um, are we also going to postpone the increase that's scheduled for next January 1st 
to the following July, or are we going to do the increase July 1st and then January 1st? That because that's what's shown here, Alderman Clemens, is the phasing in of the 20% half a year and then the I we kind of pancake on each other. So there's a multiple there's a multiplier effect here that well, what I would what I would suggest is that we we do that. Um, we leave the rest of it in place, uh, but but essentially look to plan because hopefully maybe if we can get on this, we can come up with a better schedule, and the the other increases won't won't matter if we're if we're planning ahead. I don't know how fast we could come up with something like that, but. Um, but certainly, at least in the future, if we if we modified this so that people had six months to look at it and they knew when all the other increases were, um, even if they were coming up, you know, a, instead of this year, it's only a six month increment in between, they'll at least know about it. Um, and then again, if we can really seriously look at this and come up with something else, who knows between now and then, we could have a better plan in place. So I guess it would be to just leave it, to answer your question, it would be to leave the the January 2022 increase in, in there. And then just one final uh, observation. Uh, we used to, uh, as you maybe remember Alderman Clemens, we used to put these rate increases in simultaneously with the tax increases, mm -hmm. which is a very difficult visual. Um, that's kind of why we were picking the January timeframe. Now, January, the January timeframe, that affects the billings in April. So it's a flow on or after January 1st. So the July increase would be for September. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we can, work, we can work kind of the timing of these things, but whereas the commercials are billed monthly, commercial and industrial. And the other thing is, um, it, from what I've seen, people have been kind of reluctant to have increases annually, but certainly could give it a lot of thought, especially if they're in the four, five, six percent increase range. But that, but certainly, certainly we could um, entertain the analysis, and the analysis won't take long. Well, if I if I could real quick on that, I mean, essentially what we want to do, right, is have an amount of money in that fund balance that would cover emergencies plus 10%, I, I would think, right? Isn't that kind of like the purpose of that would be the purpose of that going forward? So that if something was to happen, you could kind of foresee that and, and budget the rest of it. Um, so that's kind of where at least my initial thought process goes but I obviously there'd be a lot more to it than well, it's, it's a very good point but in the difference the material difference between a regulated utility and the city running a wastewater treatment plant Board of Alderman makes the right if you picture they, like Penetra couldn't operate like that because they wouldn't be able to get a rate they do have a, um, uh, a particular rate mechanism that helps them get cost of capital, working capital, but they wouldn't be able to just turn around and do a rate case that's fully litigated as quickly as the Board of Aldermen could have an increase if necessary. So that, that's okay. a level of comfort, but it's those, yep. are the, those are the material differences that I see between an investor-owned utility and a city-owned wastewater treatment plant or water plant. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Wilshire, you wanted to Thank speak? You. I did. Thank you, um, Director Photo. You mentioned cameraing the pipes. Where are we in that process? I know it's been a multi-year process. Are we 50, 75 percent done, or are we just in the beginning phases of that project? We are uh, more in the beginning phases of that project, but I will let um, City Engineer speak to them. Dan Hudson. That'd be great. Thank you. Dan, you want to give an update on that? Sure, I'll, I'll try. I don't. I don't have a specific percentage for you. Um, that's something we're working on right now. Is make sure we get everything into our uh, GIS system so we can more easily pull those uh, facts and figures out. 
Um, you know, we've been uh, focusing on the, the inner city area, some of the older pipes. Um, eventually we'll get out to the suburbs and a lot of that is newer pipes. So we'll continue to uh, video, but it, you know, um, the need will get less and less until we can get to a kind of a regular program uh, where we look at each pipe every 20 years or so. Uh, I, I would say right now we're still playing catch up. Uh, we've been doing a great job trying to catch those pipes and line them before they collapse. And we should continue doing that, but um, uh, there's still quite a bit to do. Thank you. I, I didn't need an exact, I was just kind of curious where you were in that process. So thank you for that. Very much appreciated. I have a couple other questions, Alderman Karen. Yes, go ahead. How crucial is it that we pass this tonight now onto the full board? Can this wait till next month so you can figure out, you know, January and July and all that? I don't know who wants to take tackle that. Maybe CFO Griffin. Sure, uh, if I may, Madam Chair. Uh, we, yes. January, January would be fine. You'd miss. To the extent you had a rate increase effective January 1st, you'd miss um, the commercial that gets billed in the beginning of February, but you still have a lot of time for the residential. Okay. Thank you. Um, it, going back to the, um, the fund that was in the wastewater uh, reserve, I guess, we, we as a board of aldermen um, we kind of had our hands tied behind our backs for 20 plus years with the well, ill, ill thought out spending cap. Um, and, and that money did, did get spent. And, you know, in hindsight, maybe we shouldn't have done that. But at the time, it was something, I mean, it was, it was there. Um, it was even, even at that time, it was a difficult choice to make. But we were, really severely limited with the spending cap that was in place for that whole period of time. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I had. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Wilshire. Is there anyone else? Alderman Kelly, is there anyone else? Yes, Alderman Clee. Sorry. Uh, uh, that's okay. No, no. Um, okay, Alderman Clee, you're right. Uh, th thank you, um, Madam Chair. Um, I have a, a couple of questions, if you don't mind, and and kind of some some statements. Um, my my first uh, question is, um, if we lowered that bottom line as was suggested by trying to put things off, um, and I think this probably goes to uh, CFO Griffith, does that affect our bond rating or um, how we are seen as a um, a strong financial uh, city? Madam Chair, I can answer that. Uh, it, it wouldn't materially in fact, in, in a, it wouldn't materially impact the bond rating. Okay, so that that's not that's not going to be a negative. That's a good thing. Um, and then I also have um, kind of a, a comment. Um, I, I lived in a, a condo for for a number of years before moving into uh, where I am now, and uh, one of the things that I I learned was that when the condo's budget was hit with something large as like this, uh, we individual um, owners were assessed. You know, we, we would get hit with a fee. We had a sinkhole at one time and suddenly had to come up with this money. And we all got a $1,500 could be paid over three or four years or something like that. Um, the homeowners are gonna have to come up with this um, $15 a quarter as uh, Director Photo had mentioned. Um, if the condos, each of the condo owners got hit with a, you know, a $60 annual fee or whatever they, they, it turned out that their each percentage was, um, I don't think that's much different than the individual homeowner. So while I agree, yes, it does affect the condo's budget and they're going to have to do some scrambling. I think they're used to getting hit with some of these unknowns. Um, and I think that they will fare well. Some might be hit harder and, and so on, but the individual homeowners are getting hit with this as well. So I, I think we need to take that into consideration. But the other question um, or comment I wanna say is I wanna agree with all of my colleagues that have stated that I think it's important for us to try to keep future um, increases to as small as possible. And I think the homeowners would probably prefer 
getting hit, even though we say $15 isn't a lot and $60 a year isn't a lot, but everything increases every single year. So if they could expect that it's gonna go up a couple dollars this year and a couple dollars next year, they may not feel it as much as getting hit with a $60 annual. Um, just That's just my kind of comment on it. And thank you for taking my um, comments and questions. You're welcome. Anyone else? Do you see anyone? Okay, so Alderman I'm going Dowd to... has his hand up. Who? Alderman Dowd. Alderman Dowd, go ahead. Thank you. Just a couple of questions that have come up over the discussion. The one, the one thing, one first question I have is, is our bond expenditure rate exceeding our um, sur uh, surrender rate? In other words, are we keeping up with the payments on the bonds or are we keep increasing that, which is causing us a problem? I can handle that, uh, Madam Chair. We're going to go to another. Certainly. We're going to go to the bond schedule. So bear with me for a second. Okay. So this is the bonds. The bonds and the notes that are associated with the fund. So if you... If you look at the top, that was what Director Photo called the CSO projects, dewatering, storage tank, aeration blower, wet weather facility projects, headworks, et cetera. So a lot of debt has already been taken out, Alderman Dowd, on those projects. And you can see the, the debt service associated, some of which are going to drop off as we go forward, sledge digester, net metering, et cetera. And then down below, is where we're now um, looking at additional debt. Pump stations, we talked about that. Primary tank upgrade, phosphorus facility, CMOM, sewer infrastructure. That's that, see that big number there? Uh, over the 10 year period, that's, that's gonna be about 55 million. So that's where the debt service kicks in. So we're, we're, we're definitely uh, systematically and timely exhausting the current debt, but we're adding more debt that's increasing the debt service. So our debt service is, we're not retiring our debt service, we're increasing our debt service, which is probably not a great thing from a financial standpoint. The other thing is, Whatever we do with this particular ordinance, what's the potential impact on the enterprise fund um, budget for 2022? Um, it would be, um, well, first of all, it would be in development, but things that were funded by debt we just increase the budget by the debt service on that debt. So uh, the debt service, that's my concern. The debt service is increasing. So the, the enterprise fund cost to the budget is going to increase, which is going to exacerbate whatever our rate is in 2022. Is that a fair statement? It, 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 the enterprise, this particular enterprise fund is self-contained where the revenue is equaling expenses. There'd be no impact on, on property taxes. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll see that. Okay. The one thing about the condo associations is, uh, I can tell you, in our condo association, we if we have an increase like from the city, they they don't go out with a special assessment. Uh, that's not the way they operate there's something in the budget that would have to give, whether it's paving the streets or reciting uh, condos or whatever. It's, it's that kind of a hit. They don't go out, at least ours doesn't go out and say, oh, we got to increase from the city. So we got to go out and everybody give us 60 bucks. Doesn't work that way. The, the payment of the condo fees covers all of the expenses, all of them. 
Um, the other thing is that um, if I'm not mistaken, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I just talked to Larry Goodyear today, is not the Penachuk going out with a 20% increase request from the PUC? And that will hit this year. Yeah. And, and so there's a whole bunch of things that are hitting the taxpayers which is, and this is not a good year for that to be happening. And I'm not saying that we can't do something, but I think we need to really look at this carefully as to how much we can afford to increase this fee right now. Um, you know, are there any things that we can legitimately put off six months? You know, I mean, I think we need to look at this entire infrastructure plan and see where we might be able to adjust this. Even if we went to, a, as Alderman Clement said, go to say 15% or, or whatever percentage in July, and then possibly add another percentage on the third year. Um, and I still don't see the analysis that says how much money we should have in this account so we never go to zero. And what that number is, I haven't seen that either. And I understand that some things are dictated by the, by the uh, you know, the government um, and we have to respond to that, but, you know, um, some of these things that are bond, not bonded, and I'm looking at the, the life expectancy from 20 to 53 years, you know, maybe we're not hitting our bonding requirements correctly. And, and, and uh, instead of having as big a rate increase, we do more bonding. Now, yes, the debt service will increase, but, but we can plan for the impact over more years. Uh, so, you know, I was looking at the, the uh, infrastructure over the next two years, which seems really high. Um, and I don't think we're in a position yet where we have to develop that phosphorus treatment plant and if we do, where does that fit in? And how much of an increase are we gonna to have to do when that hits? Or is that all gonna be bonded and then our debt service has increased even more? I, I just, I don't know, in my own mind, I have a lot of questions and I, I think Alderman will share that rather than put this discussion on a regular board meeting, we perhaps need another special board meeting so that all of the aldermen can chip in, other people can comment um, because the, the feedback that I've been getting with limited knowledge of this isn't good. You know, uh, with the people are hearing tax increase of 10% or 8% or whatever in 22, and now we're hitting them with a 20% of wastewater, Penachuk hits them with a 20%. It's not a good sign. And I think we have to be a little bit more physically responsible right now. I don't know what we can do, but uh, I'm certainly willing to listen to alternatives. Is that it, Alderman Doug? Yes. Madam Did Chair? you want? Madam Chair, oh, uh, I was just going to ask if you have if you wanted to answer any of uh, Alderman Dow's questions or concerns. Yes. Um, as thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. As um, Superintendent Boucher mentioned, we've got several pages of what's called wastewater equipment, equipment replacement fund. How that fund works, and I wanna point, point to you, I brought up the first slide, line 19 reserve for replacements, about a million six, that's slightly increasing to a million six twenty two. That funds, if we put that amount, of money, that amount of money in annually, that funds that several million dollar replacement fund over the next 50 years. So that, that's the drain, that's the, re, that's the hurdle to fund that. That's, we're not, 
we're not taking the um, the costs associated with those amount those um, each piece of equipment and charging it in one year. We're, we're we're raising money to have enough to be able to pay for it when it needs to be replaced in the uh, infrastructure. But it's a number. It's a million six that that needs to be covered by the revenue each year. Thank you. Uh, may I speak, um, Alderman Karen? Yes, uh, photo. photo. Thank you. Um, I think when we're looking at and and I and I do understand the tax increases and 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 uh, and everything um, that that's coming down, but I would be very, I I really want to caution um, the committee and the board of aldermen um, to not properly fund the wastewater treatment plant. That, that's a very dangerous thing because if, if we don't run this plant the way that we should in, in, in compliance with our permits, um, we're going to receive, we're going to, we, we, we could risk shutting the, the plant down. We could risk major fines. Um, we are dangerously low, in my opinion, in this account right now. And I'm not, I'm not a financial person. My only interest, you know, I, I'm certainly taking CFO Griffin's um, advice um, on this, but they've done this analysis and they've shown uh, what we need. I think we're very da dangerously low right now in our reserve. That really concerns me. Um, this, is a, this is a very, very expensive plan to run. If anything catastrophic happened, we really should have some money in, in, in reserve. Um, and, and these, as far as, there's a lot of things that you could put off. You, we could put off uh, paving um, if, if we wanted to do that. Wastewater treatment plan is not something that we can put off um, either maintenance or, or capital expenditures. These are things that have to be done in order to comply with our permit. Um, this, this, is a, this is a very, very important asset to the city and there's nothing we can do if this plant is not operating efficiently or shuts down. There's nothing we can do with the wastewater. We have no place to go. So I just, I wanna be very cautious about I, I know it, it, it seems like there are, there's a lot of increases. I think this is a fairly modest increase though, um, given what we're, what we're trying uh, to do and the, and the importance of this. This is the city's, by far the city's most Im Im important asset. So I, I just, you know, my, my only interest is to make sure that this, we've done a great job, um, the, the, the whole team that, that manages this plant and I, I would not want to see us go backwards, that's all. Thank you, Director Photo. Anyone else that like would like to speak? Alderwoman Kelly, do you see anyone? Yes. Alderman uh, Clemens had his hand up. <laughs> okay. Alderman Clemens, can you hold off so I can speak and then Absolutely. I'll go to you? Sure. Okay, thank you. So first of all, uh, this facility is in my ward, not too far from my home. So I know how important it is to the city. It's not just a small group, it's the city as a whole. Um, and we have in the past let things go. So in the last um, nine years that I've sat on the board, I have approved, uh, voted for a lot of maintenance upgrades um, that were neglected. So I think that's very important, but I will say this, and I think a lot of my colleagues um, on the committee and that are speaking out to get this at the end of December, for us to approve something to start at the beginning of the year, I think was not a good idea because there are a lot of questions out there. And maybe to some people, 20%, $60 or $100 a year, um, added to their fees may not seem like anything, but unfortunately, we have had a year that has totally thrown everyone for a loop. So I think that we really have to think about it. My feeling was, as Alderman Clemens mentioned, to move this to July and maybe do it July half and then in December do the other half and then look at what next year brings or hopefully you 
your co committee and group would bring back some financial analysis as to what we can do because obviously we should have something forecast, even if it's only five years out, so that we could do smaller increases. I'm not sure, and maybe uh, Alderman Wilshire can chime in, that maybe this is something that we should bring, as Alderman Dowd said, for the full board to have conversation on and vote on at a special board meeting. But that's, um, that's something that I can't, um, I can't decide. So I think it's very important. We need to make sure that the treatment plan is up and running, that we don't get fined from the federal government, you know, and as we all say, the federal government makes mandates, but they never give you the money to make those improvements. So I agree with uh, Director Photo in that piece, but I really have some concerns about this rate increase, especially where we're just starting out and we're just hearing about this in January. So Alderman Clemens, um, I will let you speak. Thank you. So um, I um, want to just first say that I don't have any issue with, with what's on the table as far as um, the maintenance schedule or, um, or, or or how you operate down there, any, anything like that. I, I think you do a great job. I think it's probably one of the best run departments in, in the city. Um, but what I'm questioning is just the need to have, you know, eight or $9 million in cash um, sitting there. I don't know. And I guess that's kind of where where I am curious to see if we can do uh, a little bit of a deeper dive and see if we can maybe make these, um, you know, figure out what the minimum number is that we want in that in that account, and then um, adjust the rate increase to that. And maybe we have to do it over um, a number of years. You know, maybe it's higher at first just to get us to that point and then to maintain it, it's less as we go down the line. I guess I would like to see an analysis like that. But my question would be to the CFO is how long would something like that take your office to produce? Madam Chair, we, it wouldn't take long because you just reverse engineer. We lock in some comfortable number down the bottom and just just adjust the rate up top. Instead of letting it flow down, you flow it back up. The way we've been doing it is a typical utility rate making procedure where you're trying to get your cost of service, your cost of capital and things like that locked in. And then you go a number of years making sure your shareholders are satisfied, your customers are satisfied. And then this here is a little bit more straightforward. You can just, you can create the rate annually. Is that something you'd be able to bring to a, a, a later meeting maybe as um, something for us to look at um, that, it, that puts into effect all of the needs that are laid out here in front of us? Right, the only, the only caution would be as Director Photo indicated, if this is a very, complicated, fluid set of issues that they deal with daily. So that's gonna create the need of maybe that 4 million being 6 million. Um, and then you'll, but you'll keep a $6 million balance and do whatever it takes on the rate side with a little bit of cushion to the extent there's some conservation out there on the volumetric side to that you land on that spot. But it, it wouldn't be like this traditional approach where you know, it's a larger increase every few years instead of a smaller increase every year. But we could do that using this this page right here that we're looking at. We can just go back up and then make sure that the ensuing pages, all of those costs get get duly spent. You know, that 
but direct a photo and I and most of us don't want is we put off something that if we put in now, we're going to save money in the future. That's kind of the thing. But it can be done. The analysis can be done. It can be a workshop. I think, um, I think Madam Chair, I, that and uh, that's something I would want to see, especially considering our discussion here this evening. Um, and uh, at least give us an idea, you know, it would give us an alternative um, to kind of look at and decide as a board how we would want to go forward. Um, I don't want to stifle debate, but I, I, you know, would certainly entertain, a, you know, support a motion to, to hold this at the committee level um, so that we could get that and then look at couple of different plans moving forward. Is that it, Alderman Clemens? Yes. Okay, so um, quick question to the committee first. And then, well, no, I'll go, I'll go this way. CFO Griffin, if you had to put this together would you be able to get it done by a meeting for January 21st? Yes. Okay. So to the members of the committee that are here, we already have um, a date set for January 21st for another item that has to be looked at quickly. Would you be willing to have put a hold on this to be discussed on the 21st of January for the full board meeting of January 26th. I have no problem with that. I'm looking for other committee okay, members. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Cleaver has his hand up. Okay, Alderman Cleaver. Yes, thank you. I have no problem in, uh, in putting it off to gather information uh, as you say. But I would like to suggest that perhaps we could put off by a quarter the rate increase and have it go into effect April 1. And that way we have additional money, but we have a chance to inform the public and have a, an adjustment period where people can get, get used to the idea of a rate increase. Okay, so I would think though, if we're going to have a meeting to discuss this further with the analysis that um, CFO Griffin is going to provide us, then we could have that discussion on um, changing the rate and what month to start it at that point, because we would have to amend this um, piece of legislation. Would that be conducive for you, Alderman? Cleaver? Yeah, that's fine. It'd be part of the larger discussion. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Alderman Wilshire. Thank you. Um, I agree with Director Photo. This is a very important um, asset to the city, always has been. When the bills come through to, to fix things, you have to fix them. You have to do it. it. There's no opportunity to say, oh, we'll, we'll put that off for a full months. I mean, we obviously just can't do that. Um, I would, I, I, I think it's a good idea to um, table this for now and uh, take it back up. But what I would like everyone to do is make sure you, you think about all the questions you might have for CFO Griffin before he put something together. And then we start throwing all kinds of wrenches into it. Um, it's important. I think we should move on it. And I think we should move on it rather quickly. So thank you, Alderman Karen. Alderman Karen. Yes. Okay. So then um, I'm going to need a motion for this. But I think that if anyone has any question before the meeting on the 21st to CFO Griffin that you send it. but um, Mr. Griffin, you, you have a pretty good idea of what the committee and other aldermen are asking you? Yes, I do. Thank you. 
Okay. All right. So, um, Alderwoman Kelly, you put in for final um, passage of this piece of legislation. Do you want to change your motion? Sure. I can change my motion to table. Okay. So, I would suggest that you um, table till the meeting, uh, special meeting of January 21st. Sure. The motion is to table until the special meeting of January 21st, 2021. Okay. Do we have any questions from any committee members concerning the motion? Alderman Dowd has his hand up and I also have a question, but he can go first. Okay. So Alderman Kelly first and then Alderman Dowd. Okay. Um, I'm perfectly fine keeping it in our committee. I just, I'm not sure it was fully addressed with Lori, whether or not we want to make sure that any questions from the full board are addressed and that may be where Alderman Dowd is going. <laughs> Great minds think alike. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I guess we were all thinking the same thing. Go ahead, Alderman Dowd. Yeah, I, I was just going to suggest, as we've done many times in budget, that if people are sending questions to CFO Griffin, that at least the committee members here get copied, but I'd suggest, uh, and it's up to Alden Wilshire, that that they they go through uh, Donna and and the entire board has the questions shared, so people have the the know what questions are being asked and look for the answers and satisfy all their concerns. I, I'm okay with that. I think uh, the sooner you can get any questions or concerns to CFO Griffin, he's not trying to you know, weave them in after he's already done up a, you know, a new um, scenario for us. So yeah, good with that. Thank you. Okay, so uh, then I will, um, I will send out an email to Donna asking, telling her that this has been put off to the special meeting of January 21st and that she gets out an email to all the board members that if they have any questions, concerning the user fee that they go to her so she could get them to CFO by Friday of this week. How does that work? Alderman Karen, um, may I add one more thing after? Certainly. Go ahead, Director um, Soto. Okay, thank you. I, I just would like the um, uh, committee also to consider that there are a lot of variables and unknowns that, that we just don't have right now as well. So let's just just keep that in the back of your minds when you're thinking about uh, negative retained earnings and because there there could be other things that we're going to be required to do. We, we, have, we have two permits right now that have not been issued. There could be other requirements that we don't know of. And then we also have this consent decree that's hanging out there that um, the EPA has has told us that there will be next steps. We just don't know what those next steps will be because they haven't. We haven't. We've really we pushed back hard and asked and told them, look, look, we want to test our current CSO program before we decide what next steps, if, if any, should be. But they've been very clear that there will be next steps. So that's something else that is sort of an unknown. So just keep that in the back of your minds when you're when you're thinking about uh, the funding of of the uh, the wastewater plant. Okay, Thank so you. Director Photo, you're welcome. Director Photo, I would suggest that as part of uh, the analysis that um, CFO Griffin is going to do, that you probably add a memo concerning all of these permits and you know information that might come from the federal government that you have to take care of because we want to keep going because we are doing a fabulous, as Alderman Wilshire said, we're doing a fabulous job of getting the treatment plant up to where it should be and working and uh, Superintendent Boucher, you know, has this ongoing thing. So, you know, that will mm -hmm. also help the committee and other members of the Board of Aldermen who might have questions. Okay. okay. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Clemens so the motion. I'm sorry. So Alderman Clement has his has his hand up. Okay, Alderman Clement. 
Thank you. I appreciate it. Just briefly, um, in regards to other members uh, of the of the board, I would encourage them to, if they have a, an interest or if they have questions, to submit those questions, like was said, but also to attend the personnel, uh, the special personnel meeting. I, I big believer in, you know, doing the work at the committee level. I appreciate, and and I think that the the important thing is to know that all of the chairman and chairwomen that we have um you know always welcome uh, members who are not on the committee to come and participate and so i think we can handle this um in in committee successfully and then that okay. way if you don't have a particular interest in this you can have a nice night off and go and vote on it however which way you feel uh at the full board so all right. Thank you, Alderman Clement. Okay, so we have a motion to table until the January 21st Special Personnel Advisory Committee meeting on Ordinance 0-20-040. Do we have any other questions or concerns out there? If not, will the clerk please call? the roll. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Um, Alderman Kelly is a yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. And Chairwoman Karen. Yes. We have four yeas. Okay. So uh, CFO Griffin, we will uh, see you on the 21st Certainly. along with everything else. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all for uh, taking the time to participate in this um, project. Okay. Alderwoman Kelly. Uh, we have before us O2041, amending the administrative officer ordinance. And I will make a motion to recommend final passage by roll call. And okay. And looks like maybe. Director Marchant would like to speak on it. Okay. So Director Marchant, would you explain to the committee as to why uh, we're looking to amend this um, position? Absolutely, good evening. And um, Matt Sullivan, the planning director is also here with me tonight. Um, essentially, we're looking to amend this ordinance as we haven't had an official administrative officer in place for quite a while. Um, this position has not been designated in quite a long time and the way that it was written required a specific designation. When positions change, it gets left off, we forget. And um, with specific um, zoning board appeals, uh, right to no law requests and lawsuits that occasionally come our way, it is a problem to suddenly put in legislation and get something in place. And so what we've proposed here is it has traditionally always been the planning director um, we are looking to make, to designate it as such. And in the case of an absence of the planning director that it would come to the community development director. Um, and so that way we have everything in place so that if there is a need, um, we have been kind of operating this way anyways, um, but if there was a need, it could be completely um, covered. So that is the quick explanation. I'm happy to answer questions and Matt is here as well. Okay, so does anyone from the, Committee, have any questions to Director Marshall? I don't see any. Shall I call the roll? Uh, no. Director Marshall, do yes. you have someone in this um, position now? Yes, Matt Sullivan, who is here with us tonight. Um, he came on board in October, September, and he is September. the planning director. September. <laughs> <laughs> so he's been there a while. Okay. Yes. All right. And, and the uh, community development division director is okay to um, sit in as acting. Yes, that planning would be me, my position. And I, um, in the absence of the planning director, I have been sitting in in that position um, 
until we brought Matt on board in September. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for those answers. Okay. Since there's no other questions, uh, would the clerk please call the roll for final approval on amending O-20-41. The motion is final approval of O-2041. Um, Alderman Clemens. Yes. Uh, Alderman Kelly is a yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. And Alderman Karen. Yes. Yeah. Four yes. Okay. Thank um, you. Thank you. Okay. So everything else is on hold. Do we have any public comment? I don't see anyone from the public on. Okay. All right. Any general discussion? I don't see anyone. Okay. Remarks from the alderman? No. Okay. So I just want to um, tell the committee members that. June, are you there? I was just going to ask that, but I didn't know if it was me. I guess we'll wait a minute. That's one way to leave things hanging. <laughs> I know. I just want to tell you me. that. News at 11. It was something critical for, for everybody to understand, but we don't know what it is. Uh, hopefully she can reconnect. I just uh, sent her a text to let her know. No. Give her a minute. I was going to call her and give her some grief. You call her and put her on speaker. <laughs> We've done that before at a yeah. meeting once. Yes, we have. Yeah. <laughs> we can't adj adjourn. We lost the chair. <laughs> Has she responded, uh, Joe? And there, no. someone <laughs> writes a voicemail. I'm wondering if maybe she's having technical issues. Well, Matt's still on. In your short time, you're starting to get these ancillary assignments. So you've been accepted. <laughs> oh, thank, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. No, I, uh, Sarah offered, and I felt I felt I should step in. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I worked. I worked for the federal government and our, our PDs used to say, and other duties as assigned. assigned. So this exactly. is your other duty as assigned. Yes. That's exactly right, yeah. yes. <laughs> it's part of your job description. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like she's back. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, no, we all left. Yay. <laughs> yeah, we all left. Yay, I'm sorry for some reason. Canceled out, and then I'm seeing all these text messages. I'm sorry. So, did where did, where did you lose me? You you were you gave us a cliffhanger. You said I'm going to tell you, and then that oh, was I told you I was going to tell you. That's why Alderman Clemens, your face was like, where is she? So, yes. <laughs> okay. So I just um, I just wanted to remind the committee members that our meeting that I had scheduled for January 21st was to have uh, the new person that Treasurer Fredette is bringing on for the position of Deputy Tax Collector uh, because we have to approve that position. 
So they will be there that evening. Uh, and the reason he wants to bring the applicant in sooner rather than later, because obviously he'd like to have them train with um, Ruth Radziwick before she leaves um, in the end of February. And then the other part of this now, we will have the discussion about the sewer user fees at that time. So please, if you have any questions, please get them to um, Mr. Griffin in a timely manner, and then we'll have all the information that we need so that we can present it to the full board on January 26th. You all could hear me. You all heard that, right? Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. All right. So that's all I have. Um, is there any, I think we got everything else. Any other comments from Alderman? I don't see any other comments. Okay. And there's no need for non-public? Correct. Okay. So Alderwoman Kelly. I would like to move to adjourn by roll call. Okay, would you please call the roll? Alderman Clements. Yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. Alderman Kelly is a yes, and Alderman Karen. Yes. So we are adjourned at 9.01 p.m. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for being patient. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Good night, Good night everyone. everyone. Good night. Bye.